Welcome to the course Formal Language and Automata Theory. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about some other concepts related to undecidability. First year, we will discuss about one undecidability problem, which is called as post correspondence problem. Then some other undecidable problems. So later we will discuss the concepts related to type one acceptor as for Chomsky hierarchy. So type one language is called as context sensitive language. Then type one grammar is called as context sensitive grammar. Then type one acceptor is called as linear bounded automata. So this also we will review. So at the end of uh, this session. First, let us move to our uh, first concept post correspondence problem. So in our previous lecture, we discussed some undecidable concepts, then continuation of uh, our previous lecture, some other concepts. So the first one is post correspondence problem. Post correspondence problem is an example of a problem that does not mention Turing missions in its statement. That means yet it is undecidable. So this PCP problem is still undecidable, unsolvable. So the PCP was first introduced by the scientist Emil Post in 1946. Later, the problem was found to have many applications in the theory of formal languages. From PCP, we can prove many of other non Turing mission problems which are undecidable. That is the use of post correspondence problem. So, what exactly a PCP problem? To establish some intermediate results that bridge the gap between the halting problem and other problems. So this is the main purpose of a post correspondence problem. These intermediate results follow from the concept of undecidability of the halting problem. So this is known as post correspondence problem. Now the theorem related to this one, you can take the post correspondence problem, which is undecidable means unsolvable. So the PCP is undecidable. This is one of the kind of uh, undecidable problem about uh, Turing mission. While coming to formal definition of post correspondence problem. So the PCP over an alphabet sigma. So it can be stated as follows. Consider two lists. Let us say A equal to X1, X2 and so on Xn. This is list one. Then uh, list B equal to Y1, Y2, and so on Yn. B, the two sequences of N strings over the alphabet sigma. Among these two lists, there exists a post correspondence solution called as simply PC solution for a pair A comma B. A is list one, then B is list B. So, so when there exists a post correspondence solution for the pair A comma B, if there is non empty sequence of integers, so that is I1, I2 and so on, I am such that from the first list, X suffix I1, X suffix I2 and so on, X suffix I am equal to from the second list, Y suffix I1, Y suffix I2 and so on, Y suffix M. So whenever this equivalence relation exists from the two lists with uh, the suffixes of both left hand side and right hand side should be equal. Here you can see from list A, the elements x1 to xn, the suffixes you can see i1, i2, and so on, im. Then from list B, the elements y1 to yn, the suffixes here you can observe y i1, y i2, and so on, y i m. So like that, if you can establish an intermediate results between from list A to list B by equating the left-hand side suffixes, then right-hand side suffixes. Here you may start with any sequence. 
you may start with i2 x i2 then y also you have to start with y i2 only if you can start with x i3 y also it has to start with y i3 so any order so whatever the order you have to follow from list a same order you have to follow from list b but whatever the values of x1 to xn then y1 to yn should be equal that means the left hand side sequence is equal to the right hand side sequence for that what is the order of uh, the elements of list should be arranged so that is called a post correspondence problem so whenever that uh, relationship exists then we can say that problem has pcp solution now you can see the sequence i1 i2 and so on im so here left hand side we have taken uh, x suffix i1 x suffix i2 and so on x suffix im then right hand side also similar sequence y suffix i1 y suffix i2 and so on y suffix m both sides the sequence is same then in this case whenever this situation occur then the sequence i1 i2 and so on im is called a post correspondent solution or simply pc solution for this instance so here any order you can take but whatever the order you are taking from list a second list also same order you have to follow even some repetition solve followed left hand side list whatever the sequence you are repeating same thing will be repeated in the right hand side list also so now that is the post correspondence problem now let us demonstrate some example problems so the question will be given like this the first question is let the alphabet sigma equal to 0 comma 1 let the pcp instance consist of two pages as shown below table now the question is does pcp have a solution here you can see list a equal to given as x1 comma x2 comma x3 then where x1 equal to so xi x1 equal to i value is 1 so x1 equal to 1 1 then x2 equal to the second value 1 double 0 then x3 equal to 1 1 1 this one then similarly list b equal to given three elements that is y1 y2 y3 so where y1 equal to yeah this value so triple one then uh, y2 equal to 0 0 1 then uh, y3 equal to 1 1 so now here what you have to do to find the pcp solution you have to equate uh, both lists from a and b so whatever the sequence you are taking from list a so list b also you have to take the same sequence so for example here here you can take xi here you can take yi now you can take the sequences suppose here if i will take x1 compulsory you have to take y1 here so but uh, substitute the values the strings should be matched in both sequences finally not initially finally after uh, completing the sequence suppose here x1 equal to here x1 is 1 1 then y1 is triple 1 so anyway here it start with one here also it start with one suppose now if you can take the second sequence from x as x2 then compulsory here you have to take y2 so now what is x2 value here one double zero here you can see then y2 value also you can substitute zero zero one now you can see whenever you are substituting so time to time you can verify the left hand side sequence is uh, equal to the right hand side sequence or not here you can see three ones here also three ones then uh, two zeros then two zeros one so here one extra symbol one is there compulsory next sequence in list x start with one so let us say all are starting with one for example let us take x3 here what is x3 here triple one now you can see it matches still one now two more extras are extra ones are there compulsory here you have to take y3 why because here x3 is taken but what is y3 value two ones now you can see so here three ones here three ones then uh, two zeros here two zeros then three ones now three ones now see here uh, equating uh, the both uh, elements from list x and uh, list y 
now see here the intermediate results are established here so therefore therefore the sequence so here the sequence of integers the suffixes what we have taken 1 2 3 right hand side also 1 2 3 so 1 2 3 the sequence 1 2 3 is a post correspondence solution but for all problems you won't get with the direct uh, sequence order so at that time you can check all possibilities if you can start with x1 then right hand side start with y1 if you can start with x2 right hand side also start with y2 if you can start with x3 right hand side also start with y3 even sometimes you have to repeat also so whatever the value you are repeating in the left hand side right hand also you have to repeat the same so like that finally we have to establish some intermediate results uh, which shows the left hand side sequence string is same as the right hand side sequence string with the same suffixes then the suffix sequence is called as the post correspondence solution so like that we have to find here see clearly i have given the same whatever i explained so here i have taken xi yi first i am taken x1 x2 x3 then substituted their uh, strings then corresponding y1 y2 y3 now luckily here in this problem in the same given order by taking all at once in the same order we are getting equal both left hand side and right hand side sequences so therefore as for our uh, definition here i1 equal to 1 then i2 equal to 2 the suffixes then i3 equal to 3 both sides left hand side right hand side getting the same sequence so then xi1 xi2 xi3 equal to yi1 yi2 yi3 that is x1 x2 x3 equal to y1 y2 y3 equal to giving the same string therefore the solution is i1 i2 i3 equal to 1 2 3 this is the post correspondence solution so like that for any given problem so we can find uh, by using pcp whether there is a solution or not now another example let us see does pc the post correspondence with the two lists have a solution here list a list b with the elements x1 equal to b x2 equal to b a b q here b q means you can expand in strings no powers are allowed but while simplification you can expand the power value now x3 equal to b a then y1 equal to b power 3 then y2 equal to b a then y3 equal to a so now like that uh, you can take the sequence which sequence is satisfying by making equal both left hand side and right hand side so like that uh, you can check all possibilities then finally whatever the sequence you are getting equal in both sides then you can say that is the solution of pcp so now here uh, you can see first if you can take x1 y1 you won't get uh, equal so you can try but at your end you can try all possibilities even one sequence satisfying that's enough suppose if one sequence is not satisfied then you can check for other sequence so directly by checking one sequence we can't conclude the pcb has no solution all possibilities you can verify at your end you can verify so here uh, i am providing one sequence here we are getting equal first i have taken here x2 here y2 so now here i have taken next x1 here y1 next i have repeated x1 again here i have repeated y1 now i have taken x3 here i have taken y3 now you can substitute the string, strings here so b a b b power 3 b b b a b a b power 3 so then uh, three b's so power 3 means three b's at, at last here now here uh, we are getting equal with the sequence x2 x1 x1 x3 then y2 y1 y1 y3 so now the solution is here i2 i1 i1 i3 that means 2 1 1 3 is the pcb solution you may try with other sequences you may get different answers also so here based on the sequence you are taking so different uh, solutions may obtain but finally even one solution is enough to check the pcp has a solution or not by establishing the intermediate results then another example also I have taken here, you can see example three, show that PCB has no solution for the given two lists. The question itself given no solution, but anyway, you have to check with all possible combinations. 
here from list x equal to 0, 1, 1, 1. Nothing but this is x1, x2, x3. And list y equal to 0 power 0, 1 square. This is y1. 1, 0 is y2. Then 1 power 2 is y3. So now, for example, here, case 1, if you can take x1, x2, x3, then y1, y2, y3. Here you can see x1 start with 0. Then uh, y1 start with 0. So then uh, x1 is 0, 1 actually. Then x2 equal to, you will get single 1. Then y2 equal to, what you will get? 1, 0. Then uh, x3, you will get single 1. Then y3 is 1 power 2. Now here you can see, here, whenever you can take this sequence, does not match. Therefore, x1, x2, x3 is not equal to y1, y2, y3. So in this case, no solution. So similarly, I have taken x1, x3, x2. So here 1, 3, 2. Here also y1, y3, y2. So 1, 3, 2. So here also does not match. So and so on. Like that, uh, you can verify all possibilities. Why? Because the answer already given has no solution. But by taking all possibilities, you can check. So by taking all combinations also, if you are not getting intermediate results, then you can say the PCP has no solution. So like that, these type of questions will be given in our examination related to PCP. So now there is one variation in PCP, which is called as modified post correspondence problem, abbreviated as MPCP. So a PCP is said to be modified post correspondence problem. If the sequences are X1, Xi2 and so on Xim equal to Y1, Yi2 and so on Ym. Here you can observe in the left hand side sequence X1, in the right hand side sequence Y1, always same. That means X1 equal to Y1. So you have to fix left hand side, it must start with X1, right hand side it must start with Y1. Then others may be in any order. So in any problem, if this case is happen, then we can say that problem has modified PCP solution. So we say that the pair A comma B has a modified PC solution. If there exists a sequence of integers I1 to IM such that X1, Xi2 and so on Xm equal to Yi1, Yi2 and so on Ym, always X1 equal to Y1. So this is the restriction in modified post correspondence problem. So here X1, Y1 are fixed. Remaining after X1, after Y1. You can take any order. Left hand side, whatever the order, right hand side also same order. You have to follow even by repeating also. This is called as modified post correspondence problem. So here observe one note. If there exists a modified post correspondence solution for an instance, then there is also a PC solution also, post corresponding solution. But the converse, reverse is not true. So for this also the theorem, the modified post correspondence problem is undecidable. So both PCP and MPCP are undecidable. Decidable. Now there are some applications of post correspondence problems with respect to various types of uh, languages and grammars as for Chomsky hierarchy. PCP can be used to show that a wide variety of problems which are undecidable. See some of the examples of application. If L1 and L2 are any two context free languages over an alphabet sigma and uh, the length of the alphabet mod sigma is always greater than or equal to two minimum two alphabets. So there is no algorithm means unsolvable to determine whether or not L1 union L2 equal to pi, that is empty. Then L1 intersection L2 is a context free language. Then L1 equal to L2. Then whether any context free grammar is ambiguous. So all these problems related to context free language and context free languages. Even closure properties of CFL, we discussed the same problems here. For all these problems, there is no algorithm to prove all these questions about context-free languages. So these are all undecidable or unsolvable. So using PCP, so this is the one of the application. Then coming to second application, so you can take a other kind of grammar that is context-sensitive grammar. Now we will discuss after completion of uh, undecidability. So context sensitive grammar, CSG is a type one grammar. There is no algorithm or unsolvable to determine whether or not L of G equal to empty, 
then L of G is infinite. Any string X naught belongs to L of G for a fixed string X naught. For all these problems also. So there is no algorithm. So to prove all these problems, that's why these are all unsolvable or undecidable. This is the second application of post correspondence problem. Then coming to third application. So this is related to other kind of grammar, which is called as phrase structured or unrestricted grammar, which is a type zero grammar. Now, where, uh, whatever the topics we covered related to Turing mission, that is type zero. Then recursively enumerable language is also type zero language. There we didn't discuss about type zero grammar. Now we will discuss about this grammar also. So uh, after end of uh, this topic. So here also, if you can take phrase structured or unrestricted grammar, which is a type zero grammar, there is no algorithm, means unsolvable, to determine whether or not any string X belongs to sigma closure is in L of G. So this is also undecidable problem. This is also another application of post correspondence problem. Okay, that's all about a post correspondence problem and modified post correspondence problem. Now we'll move to some other undecidable problems. So till now, whatever the problems we discussed related to recursively enumerable language, recursive language, then uh, problems about Turing missions, then a post correspondence problem, then modified post correspondence problem. So now some other undecidable problems, let us see here. So we shall consider a variety of other problems that we can prove undecidable. The principal technique is reducing PCP to the problem we wish to prove undecidable. So some of the examples of other undecidable problems we will see here. Problems about it, some programs. Then undecidability of ambiguity for context-free grammars. Then complement of a list language. So these three we will see under other undecidable problems category. So then problems about programs. So first observation is that we can write a program in any conventional language as for your choice that takes as input and instance of post correspondence problem on searches for solutions, some systematic manner. Example, in order of the length, that is number of pages of potential solutions. Since post correspondence problem allows arbitrary alphabet, we should encode the symbols of its alphabet in binary or some other fixed alphabet. So in this case, we can have our program do any particular thing we want, for example, halt or print a text hello world so when and if it finds a solution otherwise the program will never perform that particular action thus it is undecidable whether your program prints hello world or not so it is uh, decidable or undecidable if it prints means it gives the solution it won't print means it won't give the solution that means here whether it holds or whether it calls a particular function, so rings the console bell or makes any other non-trivial action. So like that, we can justify. So in fact, uh, there is an analog of Rice theorem for programs. That is any non-trivial property that involves what the program does means rather than a lexical or syntactic property of the program itself. So this must be undecidable. This is analog of Rice theorem with respect to program. So here in Rice theorem, we are using non-trivial, which is significant important. Whereas uh, trivial means little worth or importance. So that is the undecidability about programs. That means printing something. So whether it prints or not. Then another one, undecidability of ambiguity for context programmers. So we discussed uh, the ambiguity concept in context free grammars by constructing a derivation tree or parse tree or uh, having two or more leftmost derivations or uh, two or more rightmost derivations for a given grammar for a string, then the grammar is said to be ambiguity. So now also we discussed how to eliminate the ambiguity also. Now undecidability of ambiguity for context free grammar. This is also one problem related to undecidable. So here we shall see how to reduce all these we are discussing with respect to post correspondence problem. So we shall see how to reduce PCP to a problem that looks nothing like a question about computers. The question of whether a given context free grammar is ambiguous. So with respect to PCP, how this will be proved undecidability. Let the PCP instant consist of 
list a equal to w1 to wk then list b equal to x1 to xk for list a we shall construct a context free grammar with a as the only variable now let us see the terminals are all the symbols of the alphabet sigma used for this pcp instance plus a distinct set of index symbols a1 a2 and so on ak that represent the choice of pairs of strings in a solution onto the pcp instance why because uh, the sequences x i i1 i2 and so on i n so compulsory the sequences required to find the pcp solutions so that is the index symbol a represents the choice of wi from list a or xi from the list b the compulsory the sequences needs to be considered so let us take the productions are of the form in the variable a a derives w1 variable a terminal a1 w2 variable a terminal a2 and so on wk variable a terminal ak or then uh, both string followed by terminals w1 a1 w2 a2 and so on wk ak we shall call this grammar g suffix a for the variable a using only one variable and its language let us say l suffix a so in the future we shall refer to a language like l a as the language for the list a then uh, if you can represent the derivation tree for this production here first we have a derives w i1 then again variable then right side you have a terminal so again a if you can substitute w i2 another variable followed by terminal a i2 and so on so this is the parse r derivation tree then uh, other variations by taking only terminal string and terminal combination w1 a1 a derives w1 a1 in general form w i m minus 1 then uh, again a variable then terminal a i m minus 1 and so on so actually this is a single parse tree only so bottom of this uh, this will be taken so the form of parse trees in grammar g a similarly for uh, list b also you can define the grammar using the variable only b name it as gb then the language is called as lb now let us consider the other part of the given pcp instance list b with consisting of x1 x2 and so on xk for this list we develop another grammar let us say gb so defined as b derives x1 variable b terminal a1 then x2 variable b terminal a2 and so on then followed by uh, x and a terminal combination x1 a1 or x2 a2 and so on xk ak so the language of this grammar will be referred to as l b so for this also you can draw the parse tree in the similar fashion now by using these two lists corresponding grammars and languages now we can define the undecidability with respect to pcp finally we combine the languages and grammars of the two lists form a grammar the new grammar g suffix ab by taking both a and b grammars for the entire pcp instance now gab consists of variables ab and s is the start symbol then s productions are of the form s derives a or b both variables then all the productions of ga grammar then all the productions of gb grammar so these are all uh, included in the resultant grammar gab so now here we claim gab is ambiguous if and only if the instance a comma b of pcp has a solution so now without finding leftmost or rightmost derivation using pcp for this resultant grammar gab when you can say this grammar is ambiguous for the pair ab if it has a pcp solution then you can say the grammar gab is ambiguous so that is the advantage of pcp here now the theorem related to this one it is undecidable whether a context free grammar is ambiguous so this is another undecidable problem so then by considering the complement of a list language the other kind of undecidable problems so having cfls like la for the list a let us show a number of problems about cfls to be undecidable so more undecidability facts for cfls can be obtained by considering the complement language of 
list a let us say l dash a the language l dash a consists of all strings over the alphabet sigma union it takes the sequence also a1 a2 and so on ak so that are not in la where sigma is the alphabet for some instance of pcp and a suffix size are distinct symbols representing the indices of pairs in the pcp instance then the theorem related to this one for complement of a list language the list language here we have taken la's complement is l dash a so if la is the list language for list a then its complement is l dash a is a context free language this is the theorem related to this one so then another theorem is there so if g1 and g2 be two context free grammars and l r be a regular expression then the following are undecidable the following questions is l of g1 intersection l of g2 equal to mt is l of g1 equal to l of gt g2 then e is l of g1 equal to l of r then e is l of g1 equal to t closure for some alphabet t then e is l of g1 is subset of l of g2 then e is l of r is subset of l of g1 so all these questions related to the two context free grammars g1 and g2 and a regular expression r which are undecidable means unsolvable so these are all the some of the other undecidable problems so now till now the concept of undecidability is over now the missing concepts related to chomsky hierarchy that we will see here the first one is here we used type 0 grammar which is called as pre structured or unrestricted grammar as for chomsky hierarchy so watch this video i, I already uploaded the complete chomsky hierarchy representation so type 0 grammar is called as pre structured or unrestricted grammar so how to define this grammar see any context free grammar the tuple definition is same g equal to vt sp grammar to grammar only the production rules are changed remaining all tuples meaning is same a grammar g equal to vt sp is called pre structured or unrestricted grammar if all the productions are of the form p is mapping from x to y where x not equal to y that means left hand side symbols not equal not equal to right hand side symbols this is the only condition where x belongs to the left hand side what it contains variable variables as well as terminal string of variables and terminals excluding null here positive closure means excluding null whereas right hand side as usual same as in context free grammar strings of variables and terminals including null that is asterisk there is the difference you can recall once the definition of regular grammar so the productions are in the form of uh, see in regular grammar regular grammar the productions are in the form of a derives b a or a derives terminal a left hand side only a single variable right hand side a variable followed by a terminal or a single terminal then if you can see context free grammar so x derives y where x belongs to v then y belongs to v union t asterisk that is star closure that means left hand side contains a single variable right hand side strings of variables and terminals including null here you can see the phrase phrase structured are unrestricted grammar so both regular grammar and context free grammar left hand side only single variable but here left hand side there is no restriction so x means it contains either variable or terminal or string of variables and terminals but it won't allow null in the left hand side but uh, it allows variables or terminals or combination also right hand side you can see this is same as context free grammar same as context free grammar here see v union t whole closer that is asterisk so these are the differences uh, among regular grammar context free grammar and uh, phrase structured and unrestricted grammar now there is one theorem related to this grammar any language generated by an unrestricted or phrase structured grammar is recursively enumerable language or same thing can be given more formally if l is l of g for phrase structured or unrestricted grammar g equal to vtsv then l is recursively enumerable language so this is the theorem related to 
language and grammar or grammar to language so now another theorem is there if l is recursively enumerable language then l equal to l of g for some pre structured or unrestricted grammar reverse of the previous theorem reverse of the parent theorem so both possibilities are there now let us see one example of type 0 grammar that is pre structured or unrestricted grammar so a grammar generating a power i where i is positive power of 2 so the grammar is given below so let us see here here every time what you have to see so x not equal to y this is the condition you need to verify so the restriction is x not equal to y then any symbols may occur in the left hand side as well as right hand side but left hand side it won't allows null right hand side it allows null also here you can see s yes, a c a b here you can see x is yes then y equal to a c a b here x not equal to y it is satisfying the condition x not equal to y then uh, length there is no restriction on the length now you can see here uh, two here three symbols so both are not equal then c b d b but length is same but uh, these values are not same here c b d b both are different values then uh, c b derives e then uh, terminal a variable d equal to derives d a both are different so length may be equal but uh, the symbols are not same in both sides left hand side and right hand side a d a c then terminal a variable e derives variable e terminal a then uh, a e both are variables derives null so left hand side you can see no null is included right hand side even null also included so this is pre structured or unrestricted grammar example now coming to our next category type 1 so till now during chomsky hierarchy just we reviewed what is type 1 now we will see the definition and examples of type 1 language and acceptor and grammar so type 1 language is called as context sensitive language as per chomsky hierarchy type 1 language is context sensitive language so context sensitive language are type 1 languages which are accepted by linear bounded automata like turing machine turing machine has the acceptor for type 0 languages whereas for type 1 languages the acceptor is called as linear bounded automata so linear bounded automata is a type 1 acceptor or recognizer now we will see all this so, with a little bit description then uh, the grammar related to type 1 language is called as context sensitive grammar so how to define this grammar so type 1 languages are defined by context sensitive grammars so in context sensitive grammar more than one terminal or non terminal symbol may appear on the left hand side of the production rule along with along with it the context sensitive grammar follows the following conditions so same condition is uh, allowed in pre structured or unrestricted grammar that is type 0 grammar left hand side it allows more than one terminal or one non terminal excluding null right hand side anyway any number of uh, variables and terminals including null but uh, context sensitive grammar also satisfies the same condition of pre structured or unrestricted but what is the difference now that we will see here so other than this some other restrictions are the number of symbols on the left hand side must not exceed the number of symbols on the right hand side so here the number of symbols on the left hand side and the number of symbols on the right hand side so the length is restricted here then the rule of the form a derives epsilon is not allowed unless whenever a is the start symbol so null is allowed only in case of start starting variable so it does not access on the right hand side of any rule so these are all the other restrictions in addition to the basic now coming to definition of context sensitive grammar a grammar same uh, four tuples g equal to vtsv is called context sensitive grammar if all the productions are of the form same p is mapping from x to y where x belongs to v union t positive closure it allows any number of variables or terminals excluding null then string of variables and terminals also right hand side y belongs to v union t asterisk that is star closure that means string of variables and terminals including null but null is allowed only for the starting variable production now another condition is mod x the number of symbols in the left hand side of the production is less than or equal to the number of symbols in the right hand side of the production 
always this length should be satisfied left hand side length is less than or equal to right hand side of the length this is the extra condition needs to be satisfied so now then that grammar is called as context sensitive grammar now let us see one example so uh, context sensitive grammar for the context sensitive language l equal to a per and b per and c per and such that n greater than or equal to 1 so uh, the productions are given like this so for uh, these problem solutions uh, they want us just with examples then s derives terminal a variable b variable c every time what you have to verify mod x is less than or equal to mod y now mod x left hand side length is one is less than right hand side three symbols are there so it is satisfying the condition second one here length is one right hand side four now it is satisfying the condition here length two two so two equal to two yeah this is allowed length only we are satisfying not the symbols now c b b c two 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 equal to two then here also two equal to two then here also two equal to two here also two equal to two here also two equal to two so all conditions are satisfying that is mod x is less than mod y one condition or mod x equal to mod y right hand side compulsory the length is greater than of the length, left hand side left hand side for example if you can take uh, a a b derives b c here you can see three here you can see two so it won't uh, satisfy the condition or equal so this won't exist here then only the grammar is said to be context sensitive grammar so here every context sensitive language can be accepted by its acceptor which is called as linear bounded automata then coming to its acceptor that is type 1 acceptor which is called as the linear bounded automata so which is similar to a turing machine now see what is the variation here linear bounded automata is a type 1 acceptor or recognizer so linear bounded automaton is a model which was originally developed as a model for actual computer so this is nothing but a restricted form of non deterministic turing machine a linear bounded automaton is a restricted form of non deterministic turing machine so and also this is similar to multi track turing machine a linear bounded automaton is a multi track turing machine which has only one type and this step is exactly of the same length as that of input so whatever the input length the tape length also same that means there is no waste of uh, size exactly same as uh, the input so see the block diagram of linear bounded automata or model of linear bounded automata so here you can see same as the uh, turing machine basic model uh, it contains control finite controller cpu then read write header then the tape now here you can see the tape is restricted with the two end markers one is at left end and another one is at right end so this is dollar is called as right end marker so after seeing this tape with restriction you may recall the finite automaton the finite automaton the tape length is restricted by prefixing left end marker or the leftmost cell and the right end marker are the rightmost cell so same as uh, the finite automaton now this is the model or block diagram of uh, linear bounded automaton so whenever the read write header sees the left end marker it won't move left it moves right only whenever the read write header sees the right end marker it moves towards left only it won't move right then the movement of read or write header in between the two end markers only this is the model or uh, block diagram of uh, model or block diagram of linear bounded automata so now these are all the restrictions actually in linear bounded automata the tape is restricted by two end markers so one is at left end which is denoted by the less than symbol or uh, this symbol which is called a left end marker and the other end is restricted by greater than or dollar so which is called a right end marker then the movement of read or write header lies between these two end markers only that is the left end marker and right end marker so these are all the restrictions so whenever the tape read or write header sees a left end marker it cannot replace the left end marker and 
by any other symbol simply it moves only towards right direction similarly whenever the reader right header sees a right hand marker it can replace the right hand marker by any other symbol simply it moves only towards left direction that means the movement of uh, read or write header lies in between left hand marker and right hand marker only then coming to the formal definition of linear bounded automata which is same as turing machine seven tuples denoted by q sigma tau delta q naught now here blank symbol is not required here here two extra states are taken same as final state which is called as q accept final state then second one is rejecting state that is non accepting state called as q reject so where q is non empty set of states sigma is input alphabet sigma is input alphabet which is subset of tau tau is finite set of tape symbols called as tape alphabet then q not is in q that is initial or start state then q accept is called as accepting or final state which is belongs to q then q reject is rejecting state which is also belongs to q then delta is mapping function or transition function which maps from q cross tau to q cross tau cross l comma r so your definition is also same as turing machine but only the restrictions in between left hand marker and right hand marker where l is the movement of read right header towards left then r is the movement of read or write header towards right now see the restrictions here so these are all the additional things remaining all are same as turing machine so restrictions in linear bounded automaton so from a state whenever it sees left hand marker so without changing state and without replacing that end marker with other symbols simply it moves right direction that is delta of q not left hand marker equal to q not with same left hand marker the direction is r it won't move left it moves only right then same whenever it sees right hand marker greater than or dollar so without changing the state without replacing the right hand marker it moves left so that is delta of q not comma dollar equal to q not comma dollar comma l that means the two end markers are not belongs to tau or sigma so these are all the restrictions of linear bounded automata remaining everything same as turing machine so which is a, a kind of non deterministic turing machine now come to summary of this lecture what we covered till now here some undecidable problems uh, we continued the first one is post correspondence problem then followed by modified uh, post correspondence problem then we discuss some other undecidable problems so related to context free grammars ambiguity programs and complement uh, of the list languages then we discussed uh, type 0 grammar which is called as pre structured or unrestricted grammar then type 1 language context sensitive language and type 1 grammar context sensitive grammar then uh, linear bounded automata which is called as type 1 acceptor or recognizer now i stop here